Thank you. Today marks the 29th anniversary of the disappearance of Nicole Moran. The Toronto Police Service have chosen this day to launch our social media campaign with the release of a Twitter and Facebook site dedicated to helping to find Nicole. On Tuesday, July the 30th, 1985, Nicole Moran was abducted from her apartment building located at 627 the West Mall in Etobicoke. It is a 21-story apartment complex with a, a swimming pool at the rear of the building. Nicole had made plans with a friend to meet in the lobby of her building to go swimming. At approximately 11 a.m., Nicole said goodbye to her mother and left the apartment to go meet her friend. Hello. Tragically, Nicole was abducted on the way to the meeting and was never seen again. Police were first contacted about the abduction later that evening. What resulted was the most intensive police search for a missing person in the history of the Toronto Police Service. Over 15,000 hours were put into the investigation between the date of her abduction and January of the following year. Over 900 community members joined the search for Nicole, yet no trace of her was ever found. The search for Nicole involved the creation of a task force in 1985 with a total of 20 members. The task force conducted a coordinated search of Etobicoke involving community members using cars, horses, aircraft, dogs, and all-terrain vehicles. Despite their best efforts, no, no trace of Nicole Moran has ever been found. We are working with our partners at Crime Stoppers, and they have developed a video reenactment. I'm now going to call upon Crime, St Crime Stoppers coordinator Chris Shirk to talk about that video. Thank you, Madeline, and thank you for the opportunity to stand before you today. I'm Chris Shirk, and I'm the Toronto Crime Stoppers Program Coordinator. Crime Stoppers is a not-for-profit charity working in partnership with the police, the media, and the public. We've recently filmed the reenactment of the last known actions of Nicole Moran at 627 the West Mall. The video is one minute long. I'm asking that members of the public watch the video. I'm asking that the assembled media today assist us in making that video available to them. It's only one minute long. There's a number of ways historical crime is solved. Witnesses may remember something they saw that can assist investigators. Also, criminals talk. They brag and they confess. My belief is someone out there may know what happened to Nicole Moran in 1985 and for whatever reason feels like they can't come forward. With Crime Stoppers, you can. A simple phone call to 416-222-8477, 222-TIPS will put you in contact with a trained call taker. <coughs> that call taker will never ask your name. Your information is 100% anonymous and we'll make sure no identifiers are in that tip. This protection is endorsed by the Supreme Court of Canada, the highest legal authority in Canada. Quite simply, no one will ever know you called. You can submit a tip anonymously at our website at 222tips.com or download our smartphone app for any of the three major platforms, BlackBerry, Android, iPhone. The video is one minute long. It's on our website, Facebook, mobile app, and YouTube channel. Max Milk stores will be running the video. I'm asking everybody to take just one minute. Watch the video, make the call, and help us find Nicole. Thank you. Uh, I think at this point we're going to run the video with sound. Tuesday, July 30th, 1985, eight-year-old Nicole Moran simply vanished. The resulting investigation would become one of the most exhaustive and intensive police investigations in Canadian history. On that morning, at approximately 11 a.m., Nicole left her penthouse apartment at 627 the West Mall of Tobago to meet a friend in the lobby, intending to go swimming. She said goodbye to her mother for what would be the last time and disappeared without a trace. She was never seen again. Police believe she was taken. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Nicole Moran, call Toronto Police or report anonymously to Crime Stoppers at 416-222-8477. Remember, with Crime Stoppers, you never need to give your name and you never need to go to court.
Help us find Nicole. Thank you. We have set up a Facebook. It will be uh, found under Find Nicole. And if you go on Twitter, the hashtag Find Nicole will also provide you with some information. I am appealing to any member of the public who has information regarding this case to once again contact police at 416-808-2200. Call Crime Stoppers, visit our social media sites, and uh, we will contact you and update you with information as it becomes available. Are there any questions? What makes yeah. you think that now, almost three decades later, you'll be able to find anything that you weren't able to find back then? Um, we're using the methods that we have available to us now that weren't available back in 1985, such as social media campaigns. And we're hoping that by reaching out, we'll get a broader spectrum of the public and that somebody who has that information will feel comfortable now in coming forward and providing us with that info. What was your um, last or most current lead in this case? We receive leads con continually. We have since 1985. We've received uh, leads as recently as this year, and we continue to follow up on them. The fact that you spoke to earlier said that uh, some of those leads even to believe that she, they, you could find her. And Absolutely. We've never lost hope that we can find Nicole, and that, that is our hope that we will one day find her alive. But we do um, hope that at the very minimum that we'll find information as to what happened on that day. Yes. Thank you, Sergeant. Is this the first time that you've referred to the disappearance as an abduction? Um, well, that's how we've classified it. People just don't vanish. So um, she has disappeared, and we're treating it as an abduction, absolutely. Detective, why not treat this as a, as a homicide? At some point, after so many years, often you look at an investigation and say, it seems that now she's been why don't you think that? Well, we don't want to make that leap and draw any conclusions with the case, but having said that, we do work closely with our partners at the Homicide Squad, and we do rely on them for their assistance, and they have monitored our case um, from its inception in 1985, and we do continue to liaise with them. Yes? In cases like this, it's someone who knew the end, the, the person. Do you, do you think that it's someone who knew the I don't know. Sometimes it is someone who knew the person, and sometimes it's a random act of opportunity, and I, I can't say either way. Were there ever any suspects, if you can refresh your memory? Any there were several persons of interest at the time that were investigated, and they have been cleared. Can you get into what kinds of leads you've been getting over the years? You said you had one this year. Um, we get information from people who, you know, in hindsight, they think back and think that somebody that they knew who lived in the area was suspicious at the time. So we do follow up and investigate and try and locate those people and find out where they were back on the date of the disappearance. Why has that been cleared? Yes. Why is it where you're still getting these calls? I mean, are you still um, putting, other than today, have you still been putting this out there that you're still looking for information? Absolutely. We've, from 1985, we've appealed to the public for information. We continue to do so. Um, there are posters out there. There are agencies that broadcast this out to uh, through social media and through mainstream media sources. So we've never given up hope, and we never want to see a day where people don't call us and, and call in with information. Yes, Trevor, the um, reenactment depicts Nicole saying goodbye to her mother who's in the apartment, goes down the hall, gets in an elevator, and actually gets out at the lobby. Are those her last known movements, or, or can you just tell us what you know exactly about what she did, what's been confirmed? Right. We do have conflicting reports. We do know that she uh, left the apartment with the intent to go meet her friend in the lobby. Some reports indicate that she got out in the lobby. Other reports indicate that she did not. So that's just something that we're continuing to investigate, and we've re-interviewed the people that provided us with that information back in 1985 with the hope that... Uh, they'll remember and something else will come to their mind. Was there any uh, surveillance video at the time? No. Detective, Not within the apartment. Detective Sergeant, what about her parents? Um, take us back to how old they were then, where are they now, and what about other children? How are they coping all, after all these years? Uh, unfortunately, her mother is deceased. Her father is still alive, and we're in constant communication with him. He is very, very grateful for all the efforts um, from the public, from the media, and from Toronto Police Service throughout the years to try and find his daughter. Any other children? No. Do you think that she is alive after all of this time? I know that's a tough question. 
It's, it's my hope that she is alive, and we've certainly seen uh, recently cases in the United States where people have been missing for a number of years and they have been found alive, so we are not prepared to give up that hope that one day we will find Nicole alive. The more recent tips that you received, have you already completed investigating them and clearing them? We're continuing to investigate some of the tips. Um, they do require a little more work trying to track people down than other tips, so we are still working on some. And we're actually going back and, and reviewing the entire case and putting it on a database so that we can take a look at every single person that was investigated by the police back in, in the mid 80s and just take a second look at it. It's a really to be apartment building and was there a lot of families and children living there or can you tell us a little bit about the makeup of these? Yes, absolutely. It was um, you know an upper middle class neighborhood in Etobicoke and a lot of uh, families living in the area. Nobody from that uh, time has forgotten this incident. It haunted people at the time, and it continues to do so. And uh, those people still keep in contact with us, and everybody has that hope that we will find Nicole. Uh, just to confirm, did Nicole actually meet with her friend in the lobby? No. So her friend didn't see her. It's other people who thought they saw her in the lobby? Yes. Was her friend late at all, or was she not? Not to my knowledge, no. Her friend was there and made a phone call back up to the apartment to her mother to say that Nicole had not arrived. Was this video actually shot in the very apartment? Yes. Just tell us about going back there and doing this with a little girl. Yeah. Um, well, we've been planning this for a little while, and uh, last week we had the opportunity to go back there and to film it again. Um, the investigators who are currently working on it went back to the scene um, with our videographer and refilmed it. How was it for, you know, to go back in the building? Were people even aware in that building of what happened there? I'll just call upon Detective uh, Constable Lister McLeod to maybe talk about that. Sure. Thank you. Why does that, why does it take so long for the parents to call the police instead of the evening when they called? Yeah, I mean, her mother, um, she was preoccupied at the time. She was um, working at, out of her home, and she thought that Nicole was fine and that she had probably met up with somebody else at the time. Um, you know, she had other children that she was looking after at that particular moment. And we certainly don't want to criticize her for uh, the time delay. Um, but having said that, it is imperative that when a child goes missing, the sooner that we get notified, the better. Let's move on the club. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You can just talk about going back to the building and whether people were aware, really, of what, what you were doing, given it had been almost 30 years. Sure, so uh, we went back last week and uh, we went with Crime Stoppers and also uh, video services from Toronto Police to help uh, film the actual reenactment. Um, while we were there, uh, we did have a lot of props like the old, older police cars, so it did draw a lot of attention from the uh, building itself. And we had actually quite a few residents come out and tell us that they lived at the building at the time Nicole was abducted and that they uh, remember that day and they sort of reminisced with us. So it, it still stuck with everybody there. It still haunts a lot of people that live there. Um, there's not a whole lot of mobility from that area as far as people uh, moving out of that building. So you still find quite a few tenants that live there at the time. So it's a, it's a case that's impacted everybody. And um, I think if we can develop and move this case forward in any way, uh, it's something that we we would uh, definitely like to do so. Can we get your name, please? Sure. It's uh, Detective Constable Kim Litster McLeod. My last name is spelled L I T S T E R hyphen M A C L E O D. M A C? M A C, yes. Any other questions? I have a question for either, if either one of you will want to answer that. It kind of goes to the last answer about the mother and the reaction. Um, certainly, would you say that uh, Nicole's disappearance was one of those game changer disappearance for parents where it's kind of like a time, you look back and it's like a time capsule of how children were raised and her disappearance is one that probably changed that for a lot of people. I you think just so. Explain how, how you think that that was the impact? Absolutely. People, when that happened, it, it was a very unusual occurrence and it was unusual for the time certainly so people then became so much more aware of their children's surroundings and um, putting more and more restrictions upon them and I think as time has evolved we've uh, certainly continued to do that more and more. Yes we are, yes. Um, I can't really comment, I personally haven't been in touch with her but the investigators have 
and uh, we actually are planning on following up with her. When it comes to historical cases like this, do you have any sort of stats, whether uh, locally or in North America, on how often uh, they are successfully solved you know, 20, 30, 40 years later? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the stats available. Um, we do know that there have been success stories with uh, people who have been missing for decades. And, and like I said, that is our hope that we will find her alive. Unfortunately, I just don't have the exact numbers nationwide. What are some ways that it, uh, these, some of these cases are actually solved? Um, quite often, it's a tip that comes in from a member of the public or a family member who's been holding on to that information for whatever reason they didn't feel comfortable in coming forward at the time. Sometimes it's uh, through the use of technology and forensic information that becomes available decades down the road, and uh, we get a hit, and that leads us to the perpetrator. Who else are you still in touch with from the time, and why the friend? You never ended up meeting up with the friend. So the friend essentially wouldn't have seen anything or even known. Well, certainly um, she had plans to meet with Nicole, so we wanted to speak to her and to find out if they were planning to do anything else that day. And uh, she would have been the last person that had uh, made the arrangements and spoken with her on the phone. So it's critical that we speak to everybody who was involved with her on that last day when she went missing. Anyone else other than though Nicole's father that you have been in really sort of constant communication with over the years? Um, we've been in touch with other people, um, as Constable Lister McLeod referred to, people that live in the building. Also, some of her friends and associates from the time, we've uh, been in contact with them. People constantly call in, they want updates, they want information, and um, we do leave those lines of communication open. Is there yes. sense that it, it was someone from the building or someone that came to the building and took her? Was there any other kind of theory around that? We looked at both those possibilities. We weren't able to include or exclude either one of them. Has a court order ever been offered in this case? Not to my knowledge, but that is something that we'll consider. Where is the swimming pool that you were going to go to? It's uh, the building swimming pool. There was another pool um, adjacent to it, but she was going to the actual condominium pool. Like inside or is it outdoor? It's outdoor. Detective, you said tips led you to believe that you should be looking in certain areas. Is it immediately around the apartment or the immediate area around the apartment building? Can you elaborate on that? Well, we always search right at the scene. That would be the first place that police would go, and then we'd move outwards from that. So certainly our focus initially on that day in 1985 would have been that building. When you said the mother was caring for other children at the time, what do you mean by that? Um, she was operating a daycare in her home at the time. Sorry, just to confirm, do you believe um, whoever may have taken her would have lived in the building? I don't know. I mean, that's certainly something that we've looked at. Was it someone that lived in the building? Was it someone that was there for a particular purpose that day? Or was it random? So those are all things that we haven't been able to confirm. Just following up on a question a couple of questions ago about the tips leading you, more recent tips, have they led you to search somewhere else more than the actual building in the surrounding area? Not a particular site or a scene, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes today's conference. Um, the video is available online, or there is a copy down by the uh, sound box uh, for you to take.